model. So we're not trying to build up these profiles of our users. We're not, we're not trying to get them to use it more. A actually, we'd love it if they use it less because we don't have enough GPUs. Um, but I think other companies are already, uh, and certainly will in the future, use AI models to create you know, very good ad predictions of what a user will like. Uh, I think it's already happening in, in many ways. Mr. Marcus, anything you want to add? Hi, hyper yes, um, and perhaps Ms. Montgomery will want to too, as well. I don't, know. but um, hyper targeting of advertising is definitely going to come. I agree that that's not been OpenAI's business model. Um, of course, now they're working for Microsoft, and I don't know what's in, in Microsoft's thoughts. Um, but we will definitely see it. Maybe it will be with open source language models. I, I don't know, but the technology there is, let's say, part way there to being able to do that, and we'll certainly get there. So we're an enterprise technology company, not consumer focused, so the space isn't one that we necessarily operate in in terms of, but these issues are hugely important issues. Um, and it's why we've been out ahead in developing the technology that will help to ensure um, that you can do things like produce a fact sheet that has the ingredients of what your data is trained on. Um, data sheets, model cards, all those types of things, and calling for, as I've mentioned today, transparency. So you know what the algorithm was trained on, and then you also know and can manage and monitor continuously over the life cycle of an AI model the behavior and the performance of that model. Senator Durbin. Thank you. I think what's happening today in this hearing room is historic. I can't recall when We've had people representing large corporations or private sector entities come before us and plead with us to regulate them. In fact, many people in the Senate have based their careers on the opposite, that the economy will thrive if government gets the hell out of the way. And what I'm hearing instead today is that stop me before I innovate again. Uh, message and I'm just curious as to how we're going to achieve this as I mentioned section 230 in my opening remarks we learned something there we decided that in section 230 that we were basically going to absolve the industry from liability for a period of time as it came into being well Mr. Altman on the podcast earlier this year you agreed with host Kara Swisher, that Section 230 doesn't apply to generative AI, and that developers like OpenAI should not be entitled to full immunity for harms caused by their products. So what have we learned from 230 that applies to your situation with AI? Thank you for the question, Senator. I, I don't know yet exactly what the right answer here is. I'd love to collaborate with you to figure it out. Uh, I do think for a very new technology, we need a new framework. Certainly companies like ours bear a lot of responsibility for the tools that we put out in the world, but tool users do as well. And how we want, and also people that will build on top of it between them and the, the end consumer, um, and how we want to come up with a, li a liability framework there is a super important question, um, and we'd, we'd love to work together. The point I want to make is this. When it came to online platforms, the inclination of the government was get out of the way. Uh, this is a new industry. Don't overregulate it. In fact, give them some breathing space and see what happens. I'm not sure I'm happy with the outcome as I look at online platforms Me either. And, and the harms that they've created, uh, problems that we've seen demonstrated in this committee, child exploitation, cyberbullying, online drug sales, and more. I don't want to repeat that mistake again. And what I hear is the opposite suggestion from the private sector. And that is come in on the front end of this thing and establish some liability standards, precision regulation. For a major company like IBM to come before this committee and say to the government, please regulate us, uh, can you explain the difference in thinking from the past and now? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so for us, this comes back to the issue of trust and trust in the technology. Trust is our license to operate, as I mentioned in my remarks. Um, and so we firmly believe, and we've been calling for precision regulation of artificial intelligence for years now. This is not a new position. 
Um, we think that technology needs to be deployed in a res responsible and clear way, that people, we've taken principles around that, trust and transparency, we call them, are principles that were articulated years ago and build them into practices. That's why we're here advocating for precision regulatory approach. So we think that AI should be regulated at the point of risk, essentially, and that's the point at which technology meets society. Let's take a look at what that might appear to be. Members of Congress are a pretty smart lot of people, maybe not as smart as we think we are many times, and government certainly has a capacity to do amazing things. But when you talk about our ability to respond to the current challenge and perceived challenge of the future, challenges which you all have described in terms which are hard to forget, as you said, Mr. Altman, things can go quite wrong. As you said, Mr. Marcus, democracy is threatened. I mean, the magnitude of the challenge you're giving us is substantial. I'm not sure that we respond quickly and with enough expertise to deal with it. Professor Marcus, you made a reference to CERN, the International Arbiter of Nuclear Research, I suppose. I don't know if that's a fair characterization, but it's a characterization I'll start with. What is it, what agency of this government do you think exists that could respond to the challenge that you've laid down today? We have many agencies that can respond in some ways. For example, the FTC, um, the FCC. There are many agencies that can, but my view is that we probably need a cabinet level uh, organization within the United States in order to address this. Um, and my reasoning for that is that the number of risks is large, the amount of information to keep up on is so much. I think we need a lot of technical expertise. I think we need a lot of coordination of these efforts. So there is one model here where we stick to only existing law and try to shape all of what we need to do, and each agency does their own thing. But I think that AI is gonna be such a large part of our future and is so complicated and moving so fast, and this does not fully solve your problem about a dynamic world, um, but it's a step in that direction to have an agency that's full-time job is to do this. I personally have suggested, in fact, that we should want to do this at a global way. I wrote an article in The Economist, I have a link in here, uh, an invited essay for The Economist, um, suggesting we might want an international agency well, for AI. That's what I wanted to go to next, and that is the fact that uh, I'll get it aside from the CERN and nuclear examples because government was in, involved in that from day one, at least in the United States. Yeah. But now we're dealing with innovation which not, doesn't necessarily have a boundary. That's we correct. may create a great U.S. agency, and I hope that we do, that may have jurisdiction over U.S. corporations and U.S. activity, but doesn't have a thing to do with what's going to bombard us from outside the United States. How do you give this international authority <coughs> the authority to regulate in a fair way for all entities involved in AI? I think that's probably over my pay grade. Um, I would like to see it happen, and I think it may be inevitable that we push there. I mean, I, I think the politics behind it are obviously complicated. I'm really heartened by the degree to which this room is bipartisan and, and supporting the same things, and that makes me feel like it might be possible. I, I would like to see the United States take leadership in such organization. It has to involve the whole world and not just the U.S. to work properly. Um, I think even from the perspective of the companies, it would be a good thing. So the companies themselves do not want a situation where you take these models, which are expensive to train, and you have to have 190 some of them, um, you know, one for every country. That, that wouldn't be a good way of operating. When you think about the energy costs alone, just for training these systems, it would not be a good model if every country has its own policies and each, for each jurisdiction, every company has to train another model. And maybe you know different states are different. So Missouri and California have different rules. Um, and so then that requires even more training of these expensive models with huge climate impact. Um, and I mean, just it would be very difficult for the companies to operate if there was no global coordination. And so I think that we might get the companies on board if there's bipartisan support here, and I think there's support around the world, that it is entirely possible that we could develop such a thing. But obviously there are many you know, nuances here of diplomacy that are over my pay grade. I, I would love to learn from you all to try to help make that happen. Mr. Altman. Can I weigh in just briefly? Briefly, please. Uh, 
I want to echo support for what Mr. Marcus said. I think the U.S. should lead here and do things first, but to be effective, uh, we do need something global. As you mentioned, this can, this can happen everywhere. There is precedent. Uh, I know it sounds naive to call for something like this, and it sounds really hard. There is precedent. We've done it before with the IAEA. Um, we've talked about doing it for other technologies. There, given what it takes to make these models, uh, the chip supply chain, the sort of limited number of competitive GPUs, the power the U.S. has over the, these companies, I think there are paths to the U.S. setting some international standards that other countries would need to collaborate with and be part of that are actually workable, even though it sounds on its face like a impractical idea. And I think it would be great for the world. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thanks, Senator Durbin. And in fact, uh, I think we're going to hear more about what Europe is doing. The European Parliament already is acting on an AI act. Uh, on social media, Europe is ahead of us. Uh, we need to be in the lead. I think uh, your, your point is very well taken. Uh, let me turn to Senator Graham. Senator Blackburn. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you all for being here with us today. I put into my chat GPT account, should Congress regulate AI chat GPT, and it gave me four pros, four cons, and says ultimately the decision rests with Congress and deserves careful consideration. So on Seems that, reasonable. you know, it was uh, very balanced. I recently visited with the Nashville Technology Council. I represent Tennessee. And of course, you had people there from healthcare, financial services, logistics, educational entities, and they're concerned about what they see happening with AI, with the utilizations for their companies. Ms. Montgomery, you know, sim similar to you, they've got healthcare people are looking at uh, disease analytics, they are looking at predictive diagnosis, how this can better uh, the outcomes for patients, logistics industry, looking at ways to save time and money and yield efficiencies. Uh, you've got financial services that are saying, how does this work with quantum? How does it work with blockchain? How can we use this? But uh, it, I think as we have talked with them, Mr. Chairman, one of the things that continues to come up is, yes, uh, Professor Marcus, as you were saying, the EU, different entities are ahead of us in this, but we have never established a federally preempt given preemption for online privacy, for data security, and put some of those foundational elements in place, which is something that we need to do as we look at this. And